Okay, so in this video I just want to look at two proofs for the Pythagorean Theorem. The second one will actually be uh, due to uh, a former president, President Garfield. So let's look at a couple real quick. And, you know, I think if there's one proof you know in your life, maybe the Pythagorean Theorem is the one worth looking at. Because, right, I think if you, if you stop somebody on the street, this would be the one that most people, you know, if you said state a theorem, they would probably, if people knew one, they would give you, I think most people would give you the Pythagorean Theorem. So, okay, so let's look at this here. So I've got a triangle here, the long length, that's going to have a length A. The shorter length, that's going to be a length of B. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a little figure here. So there's one of my triangles. I've actually got four of them here. So there's my second one. So let me see here. Try to make it look kind of nice there. Uh, I didn't label the other two. But same four triangles. Okay, so let's look at those four triangles, they're supposed to be, they should all line up. My uh, cutting ability isn't perfect. So, okay, so so there's my little figure. This is supposed to make a square on the outside. So if you look at what's going on here, so we're going to calculate the area of the, you know, of, of inside the square. So we've got to add up the area of the four rep, the four triangles. So the triangles, right, the area of a, tr a triangle is just one-half the base times the height. So we'll have one-half the base times the height. That's going to be the area of a triangle. But, well, we have four of those, so we'll have to simply multiply that by four. Now, we also have this area on the inside, which we're going to have to account for. Well, if we get that area, let's think about it here. So... We know that the long length, that has a length of A, the short length is a length of B. That means what's left over, that means each side here, inside of the, the square, that's going to have a length of A minus B. Well, that would be one side length, we have to multiply it by the other side length. So that's going to give us the area now of this, this shape here, of the four rectangles plus the part that I have shaded in. Again, we've got four rectangles, and then we've got the area of the square, a minus b times a minus b, because again, each side length is a minus b. So let's call one of these big sides, let's call that c. Well, since it's a square, we know that this is also going to be a length of c. So that means the area, we can also rewrite that as c times c, or c squared. So now we've got an equation that we can solve. So 4 times 2, excuse me, 4 times a half is going to give us 2. 2 times ba, I'm going to write that as ab. Now we can just distribute a minus b times a minus b, if you remember doing all your foiling. So a times a, that's going to be a squared. We'll have a negative AB minus another negative AB, or minus 2AB when we distribute. A negative B and a negative B is going to give us positive B squared. And now we can simply subtract the like terms. We have 2AB minus 2AB, so those are going to cancel. And hey, lo and behold, what are we left with? We're left with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And again, notice that the side length, right, which we labeled as c, that's going to correspond to the hypotenuse of the triangle, right? So b and a are side lengths, you know, a base and a height, and c is going to correspond to the hypotenuse. So that's going to be one of the proofs now for the Pythagorean theorem. We've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's look at the other one that's due to President Garfield. And I read somewhere they said, oh, he, he was a, a, a math professor. And then I read something else that said he, just, he was really interested in mathematics and, and wanted to teach mathematics before he became president. So I don't know. That was my quick little research. You can do your own to, to see what, what the truth is. But he made an argument based on trapezoids. So what he did was he looked at two triangles. So I'm going to use my, my same two triangles that I just had here a second ago. So, okay, so... In a straight line here, so I've got, you know, uh, B and A, and then B and A. So what he did was he made a trapezoid. 
So the way that he made a trapezoid was he connected these two parts, you know. The, so he connected from up here to down there. Okay, that's fine. So he also labeled, he said, okay, let's make the hypotenuse of each triangle. I'm going to label that as C. So that's C. And likewise, this would have a length of C. So what he did is he made an observation. If you imagine this trapezoid, imagine coloring all this in, you're going to have a trapezoid, and he made a couple observations here. He said, well, recall, you know, the area of a trapezoid, in case you've forgotten here. So I'm just going to draw a generic one. So let's suppose it has a, a, a base B1, a base B2, and it has a height of H. The area of a trapezoid, we take one half, we take... Uh, base 1 plus base 2, we add those together and divide by 2. You're just taking sort of an average width is what you're doing. And then you multiply that by the height. That's how you would get the area of a trapezoid generically. Okay, well, let's see. If we do this here, if we look at the, our trapezoid, okay, so it's we've got 1 half. Let's see. So base 1 has a length of A. Uh, base 2, if we look at the top, that has a length of B. So there's our 1 half base 1 plus base 2. And notice the height that's going to correspond to this left side here. And that's going to be A plus B. So A plus B. So that's the area of the trapezoid, just generically using this formula. Now let's also calculate the area of this figure, just using a little bit of geometry. Okay, so the same thing here. We've got two triangles, right? And those have a base, uh, 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 excuse me, they have, to get the area, we do one half base times height. So we would have one half base times height. That would be one triangle. Okay, so we've got two of them, so we could actually double that and multiply by two. Now, the next thing that we would need is we would need to account for this area on the inside. Well, same thing, this is going to be a triangle. You could think it's one half the base, which has a length of C, and the height, which also has a length of C. So we can do one half C times C. And that's another way to represent the area of this figure. So again, here, my second part, I'm just using, you know, I'm just counting up triangle plus triangle plus triangle. And in my first expression here, I'm just recognizing, I'm using the formula for an area of a trapezoid. So if we simplify this, so if we simplify this equation, okay, so the same thing, let's distribute. So there's my 1 half. If we do a plus b times a plus b, a times a, that's a squared. Uh, a times b is going to be ab. We'll get another ab, or 2ab. b times b, that's b squared. And on the right-hand side, we would have 1 half times 2, which is just 1, b times a. And then we've got 1 half times c times c, so that's going to be 1 half times c squared. And now let's just simplify this. If we multiply both sides of this equation by 2, just to get rid of the fractions, so 2 times a half, those will cancel out. We'll just be left with a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. On the right side, you'd have to distribute, so you would have 2 times b times a. I'm going to rewrite that as a times b. And then 2 times a half, which is just 1 times c squared. And now if we subtract this 2ab from both sides. We get a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is again is the desired result. And again, notice when we originally had our, our triangle set up, right, this... Uh, this length C corresponded to the hypotenuse of the triangle. So, again, just two little quick proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, interesting. You can actually find, you know, there's books and there's, there's websites where you can find literally hundreds of proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. Some of them much more involved than this one. But two simple proofs. Um, I think it's fascinating. I think it's interesting. So, if you know one proof, uh, be able to bust out the Pythagorean theorem.